Now, we often hear of high profile Americans detained overseas in prisons. Most recently, WNBA star Brittany Griner was released on a very high profile prisoner swap for a Russian arms dealer that had been detained by the US. But chances are you have not heard of Nelson Wells Jr. of Bossier City, Louisiana, a man whose family is ready to go public after suffering in silence for nearly a decade. Well, tonight, KSL News 12's Dominique Ben investigates what it will take to get their son the medical help he needs. It was a call in the middle of the night. Hurry up, get money, they're gonna kill him. That woke up Nelson Sr. and Cynthia Wells from a deep sleep. And it was a guy on the phone and he said that Nelson was in trouble and he was incarcerated in China and the phone hang up. It was an was unknown like, voice on the other the end <laughs> talking <laughs> about their son, Nelson Wells Jr. He said, Ma, I didn't do this. Help me. Get me out of this place. Click. They had no other communication with their son until the family says former U.S. Congressman Cedric Richmond of Louisiana was able to register him on the role of overseas detainees one year later. As a mom, it just made me feel like, wow, I, I don't know which way to go because I'm always trying to be a praying mom with my children. The family burned through their retirement fund, attempting to get him removed from death row, stemming from a sentence of drug possession that the Wells family says the state has never produced evidence for. Every trial is already pre predecided what's going to be the outcome before the trial opens. The trials are basically show trials in every instance because the Communist Party cannot be found to make a mistake. They do not lose any case. Peter Humphrey, a British journalist and former Chinese inmate, is all too familiar with stories like Nelson's. 99.9% .9 of prosecutions go through and 99.9% .9 of appeals uh, are rejected. These are official statistics. Um, so there's, there's not much chance. And the reason why it ends that way is because the judge is not an impartial judge. It's because the court is not an independent court. They're all part of that Communist Party control system. Meanwhile, his health is deteriorating. Well, for the first several years, Nelson has been having a very, very high blood pressure. He's been running over the tubes. And he has a real bad sore that's in his mouth that's uh, limited to him eating. Uh, he was bleeding a lot and he has, you know, suspected of prostate cancer. The family has asked the U.S. Embassy to request more thorough testing, which they say China has refused or has not shared results. I believe that the prison authorities and officers lie all the time to, um, to, to prisoners' families about health conditions, and they withhold records such as uh, test results and so mm -hmm. forth. We, we've only got one record which shows a test result, if we may call it that, and it's the result of an MRI scan. Um, but they keep on withholding all other records whenever he has blood pressure taken or, or, or maybe a PCA test and so forth. The family was connected to Joy Cheney, a strategist who, along with journalist Peter Humphrey, began working Nelson's case pro bono. No matter how you feel about, you know, whether this could happen to you or was he guilty or what he's he not guilty, this is someone who is potentially dying in a Chinese prison far from his family for something that is relatively minor and low level, for something that he said that he did not do and that he did not get a chance to bring forth evidence that he did not do in a language that he does not understand. I know about this as a fly on the wall because I spent some time in, um, some years ago in Chinese prisons for two years. My wife also was imprisoned um, in Shanghai. Um, and there won't be much difference in the cells um, between Shanghai and Chongqing where Nelson Wells is being held. Humphrey says he's under harsh conditions, crowded cells, poor quality nutrition, and medical complaints are rarely taken serious by the Chinese government. And the event prisoners try to use them to shorten sentences. Family says he's lost nearly half of his body weight, dropping below 100 pounds. Othello Tatame, a friend who was incarcerated oh, who alongside him, him estimates he weighs even less. Before I left, they took him to another district. District 10, an area in the prison for the elderly and sick. He got some kind of, I don't know 
the name of his illness, but he started to converse. And then all, all his body gets stiff. Like when he closed his hands, you can't open it. His nerves, it has to do, it, something has to do with his nerves. His leg all cranked together. His body is very, very stiff and strong. Like you need three or four men to open his hand to, to, to make his legs flexible like it used to be. Sometimes you have to hit him hard. Tatame, a Liberian athlete, was traveling through China with his soccer team when arrested. Chilling and concealing. They said I knew the person who did it and I refused to give information. And while serving his time, he says he could tell Nelson is suicidal. Yeah, he walked when he's okay. But when he's when he's not, he can't walk. Sometimes I have to put him on my back to take him to the hospital. And now the family and advocates are asking the United States leaders to intervene and get a prisoner transfer based on medical grounds. The ball is in Washington's court. The State Department and the Justice Department need to approach their Chinese counterparts. There's an international cooperation department in the Chinese Justice Ministry which handles this process. They need to open up that dialogue and start talking about Nelson Wells so far. The American government has not done that. I believe, I have faith in God, that I'm going to see him again. Now it's left up to us to help do that. As Dominique Ben reporting, an attorney was able to successfully get Nelson Wells Jr. off death row. He was sentenced to more than 20 years. Uh, that time starts over. Nelson has written a letter to WNBA star Brittany Griner to use her voice to help Americans still jailed overseas. You can read Nelson's letter to Brittany in this story on the KSLA app. Now, Dominique also reached out to a local legislation delegation in D.C. last week. We're still waiting to hear back from U.S. Congressman Mike Johnson of Benton and U.S. Senators John Kennedy and Bill Cassidy. The family did say former U.S. Congressman Cedric Richmond of New Orleans was able to find their son and register him on a list of detainees overseas.